there's an ongoing trend here of people who want to make money from content creation without actually having the ability to build a following. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Small Entertainment. And I know that intro is very harsh, but I think it's something that should be noted because I have been thinking about making a video specifically on micro influencers for a while. However, I made the decision to not, and I just made a little TikTok being like, here's like the risk of you being a micro influencer. And now I'm getting way more, <laughs> way more UGC content pushed to me specifically on TikTok. This is where I see most of the original people who are making tons of money, allegedly. I get to see proof. This is a very dramatic image to use because I think that calling this a direct pyramid scheme is a bit excessive and doesn't fully fit because though I think that this specific image is fairly accurate considering one person starts posting about how they're making money from UGC content, two to 40 people uh, are like, oh my God, that sounds so cool. I don't make money from that without having a social media following with 200 followers on Instagram or whatever the heck. And uh, then they hear all the money they can make and all this stuff. And then they start adding more and then they start making content and selling courses because when they bring up courses, that's where I'm like, ooh. What? Then they start having courses and then everyone has courses and then you're making more money from the courses than you are making from the actual user generated content that you're making, that you're promoting is this is how I'm making all my money. And then now we're in an, it, now we have a problem, a child shape problem. <laughs> I feel like someone's gonna get mad at me for saying that a triangle is a child shape. <laughs> what is UGC? UGC stands for user generated content. Amanda, that's like all content on social media. I know you could argue that my reviews, though I am not specifically working with the brand and I'm not being paid, are considered UGC. My brain keeps wanting to say UGC content, but that's redundant. So I apologize if it slips out. However, if I do a brand deal here on YouTube that is not user-generated content, that is influencer marketing or a influencer brand deal, because the deal that I got is contingent on the fact that I have an audience and I am sharing that content with you, the audience, for the brand and I am receiving a monetary exchange for that. User generated content does not necessarily need to be posted on your socials. Most of the time, it's my understanding, you should not post on your socials. It's not what they usually want. Also user generated content traditionally does not have identifying factors in it. For example, if I am showing a product and they're like, hey, we wanna show that it, you're a woman using this product, my face, my identifiable facial features would not be in it. So say I'm advertising this, the image would be like this blocking my face, maybe making sure you don't see my glasses, but you see that I'm a brunette white chick, you know? William's gonna be mad that this is blocking my voice from the mic probably. You're basically creating content with the express purpose of promoting a product without putting any personality into it, okay? Okay. The reason I bring up micro influencers with user generated content is because I do think that the line it's there, but I don't think it's a super solid line. Like it's one of those like dot dash dot dash lines that goes between the two. Because though again, micro influencers, there is a nature of you need the personality. You need some form of a, you are getting this because you are you and not you are getting this because of your portfolio or because of other content that you make or whatever. You know, that is the nature of micro influencing. It may not be so super contingent on your audience because you may need less than a thousand. There's a whole thing, lots of issues there. No, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the cult side of the micro influencer and the rise of micro influencers. So technically, on paper, I believe. I've joked about this years ago, okay. On YouTube, I'm considered a mid-sized creator. I'm at like 340, almost 345. I'm considered a mid-sized creator. I think I'm considered a large creator either after 500K or after a million. I'm not entirely sure what the new uh, rules are for that, but I'm fairly certain I'm still considered mid-sized at this point. On Instagram, I have just about 25,000 followers over there. I think I'm still considered a micro influencer because I have done brand deals on there, but I am not getting brand deals regularly. And then on Twitter, I'm considered annoying. As far as I can tell with micro influencers, the goal seems to be how many free products can I get? And trying to maximize the ability to get free beauty products, clothes, et cetera, to do brand deals on your small, social media pages. I'm not trying to be mean when I say that it's small social media pages. That is the goal. It's usually people under 5K, 1,000. 
under 10,000 even, who are talking and making these videos. All the content that I saw during this time of how to become a micro influencer, you can get free product for under a thousand followers. And all this stuff was very much, how can I build my platform to appeal to brands? And it was not, how can I build my social media presence to gain a following, grow a community and create a platform from that community that I can then pitch to brands to then share products with my audience that I believe in, that I like, that I would promote if I wasn't being paid. A lot of my issues with people who are like, I'm gonna be a micro influencer is that the overall base of what you build is incredibly flimsy because right now, Hi, I am a mid-sized creator on YouTube. I make fairly good money from my content. I make fairly good money from brand deals. However, I've been told from my management, friends that are in management, other content creators, that people are being told and sharing how because of the current state of the US economy and where things are going, especially in influencer marketing, it is going to be affected by the recession that we are in, going into, or whatever you choose to believe. Brands are pulling out of deals, brands that are being offered deals are much less. And that's going to affect across the board content creation, whether you're user generated, micro influencers or whatever. Same goes with the micro influencers who are only being followed by other micro influencers, which is still so crazy to me. They know, you know, like I, I just think mm. my engagement's great. It's yeah, because you're in a, a group chat where you're plugging each other's stuff and, and mining interactions. It's so don't you want more for yourself? You know, don't you want to be more than literally just a storefront? Don't you, don't you want that for your content and yourself and your digital footprint online? I don't know. Like, I, I know that's easy for me to say as someone who now has a platform, but like I didn't for years. I was making content because I loved making content. I did start making content because I wanted to be famous, but like that got old very quick. I was 16, you know, we're past that. <laughs> I'm 25 now. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> we're coming up on 10 years of this. Oh God. <laughs> User-generated content is not new. Um, for example, when I was in, gosh, either, I think high school, I posted an image on, I wonder if it's still on Instagram, let's find out. When I was in high school, I went to a Lumineers concert at the Hollywood Bowl with my friend. We got there pretty early and I took a photo from our seats and posted it to Instagram. 328 weeks ago, in 2016, I posted, we have some pretty rockin' seats. Hashtag the Lumineers, hashtag the Hollywood Bulls. Got a whopping 46 likes. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Looking at it now, it's a pretty mid photo, actually. In the comment section still, I got a comment from Airbnb. We love your shot and we'd love to feature it on your and your post in our products, as well as on Airbnb social medias and materials. Reply with agree Airbnb if you want to allow us to use your content this way. And I was... Nobody. So I said, agree Airbnb. And I never heard anything back and never went anywhere. That is Airbnb trying to get user generated content. A lot of times it's more organic. Okay. And I'm sure you've been reached out to before if you post from events or of products and things like that, or if you tag a brand, that's technically user generated content. If the brand features you on their page, I mean that Airbnb wanted that to be like, look at all the cool things you can do here. Look at this photo that someone took from an Airbnb, even though I wasn't not an Airbnb. I don't know. Who knows? I don't care. Now in the year of our chaos, 2023, it's much more prevalent user-generated content because as I'm assuming you've heard me talk about in other videos where I talk about marketing, consumers, users, potential customers put trust in individuals more than they put trust in an ad on their TV or an ad on their computer. Especially if you recognize the person talking to you, you're going to trust that ad more than say some hot person in a commercial. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say that because people trust hot people that's like scientifically proven. My point is, is that if you like me, you're probably more likely to trust a product that I'm promoting to you, not just because I'm someone who reviews products and rips apart products on the regular, you know, like there's a part of your brain psychologically that does trust me or at least likes my opinions on most things. So when I promote something like say, an iPhone, you might be like, wait a minute, Swell is an iPhone? Maybe I want an iPhone too. I'm assuming it's also people who thought that they could, they saw the rise of micro influencers 
on TikTok and things like that and thought, well, why are they doing that when they can actually be making money with like the same amount of following, if not less? And this is where I kind of lose the whole MLM structure side of things. I do still am the, what's on a cult feels like a cult. This literally is like, has <laughs> not propaganda, that's not the word, but manufactured authenticity that is framed as real uh, reviews or like content. Not all user-generated content results in money. Sometimes it is just free product, but to build your portfolio, then you start making more money and all this stuff. And I think that's where, again, we lose the like top of the pyramid style of things because at the end of the day, I take brand deals. I take images. I do that. Anyone can go and take better photos. I could take a photo of this iPhone. You could take a better photo of this iPhone with a better camera, better lighting, a better backdrop. Again, what's not replaceable is myself. You cannot replace me. I am an individual. Forget my platform because there's people on this website on TikTok with the same size platform as me, probably made up with the same type of demographic as me. What's unreplaceable is myself. And that's where I think this is again, precarious for the person at the top, but also kind of loses the whole pyramid thing. I don't know why I'm doing an upside down pyramid because it's like this, because this person can be replaced by any one of these people who decides to kick it off. But again, I think that's proof that it's more perilous to be doing this type of work anyways and be relying on this work. But my point is, is that again, the where this person maintains control is courses, and their mailing lists and maintaining, okay, I have deals with, let's say, Dunkin' Donuts and Barnes and Noble. They don't do UDC as far as I can tell because they don't need to, but Barnes and Noble, okay. I have contacts for all three of these brands. I've been making content for all three of these brands, user-generated content, and I have made thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars from these brands. I have also built a following, an audience of people who also want to make user-generated content and make the money that I make and work with the brands that I work with because they see all the free products I get and all the money that I make from it and they want to get it. Now, is it in my best interest to share these contacts with people or is it more worth my time and for my own safety of my business to just give them a template of how I reached out to people and show them maybe sort of how you got this email contact and all of that. But again, I already have an established relationship with these brands. Let's see if so-and-so, they may have better content, but there might be a little difficult to work with, or they may not be confident in pitching themselves yet. So they may have better user-generated content, but they really don't know how to play the game of being a business person when also doing work with these brands. That's subjective here, but there's a lot that's also like, this person's precarious, but also they are in fact replaceable because the content even is replaceable. It's just constantly able to be regenerated by different people. Everyone can take the same slice of lemon and take a photo and it's all gonna look different because it's all different people doing it. And again, it's just like, cool, if we just work with six people all at $100 each, or there's now 500, 600, 15,000 people doing user-generated content professionally, and this person does their 14 videos or whatever it is for, um, 500, this person's going to do it for 300. That person's going to do it for a thousand. And though they have worked with a lot of great brands and have a portfolio that we've worked with them before or whatever, these photos are pretty good too. And we think they'll do the same amount of work. And I'm sure someone's gonna be like, that's a risk with any business. But this is my point is that it's already oversaturated. We're seeing it already based on the amount of TikToks that I see from different women specifically. I'm sure there are men who do user generated content. I only see women on my For You page doing user generated content. And I never see the same woman doing it. And I'm not saying like, oh, it's the same person not showing their face, holding the thing. No, I mean, every person that's a guru about user-generated content, I never see the same person twice, which tells me that there is a ton of people doing this. There's an article. This is like a, a like, oh, look at this great side hustle type of thing. Look how you can change your work life and make all this money and all this stuff from Business Insider. And it's called, TikTok has led to surging demand for UGC ads. Here's how creators are cashing in. And again, all different creators. UGC is my fave job ever. Are you ready to start your UGC career? How to dissect and study TikTok ads for UGC content. And I'm saying UGC content in that regards because it's again, content for UGC content, okay? Okay. Advertisers are embracing paid UGC as a cheap, authentic form of promotion. Again, manufactured authenticity. Uh, one of the ads that's on here is from AHMN 
a social. Finally, trying Glamnetic Nails in the style chocolate milk. Use my code. It has 129 likes. Now, user-generated content does not need to be posted to your pages, is my understanding. They may ask that you post to your pages, but it's not required. This article is talking about Amna. One day in April, while scrolling through TikTok during her lunch break, she saw a post discussing how lucrative UGC can be for creators. In the video, an influencer claimed she had made 4,000 in a month creating UGC for brands. Again, an influencer. I don't know if this is an actual influencer or if this is someone who has become an influencer from promoting the fact that they do UGC. Okay, again, the lines, boom, 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 okay? Like, Daily's TikTok was soon flooded with videos about how to succeed with UGC. Three months in, Daily's already made over $7,000 creating UGC for brands like Activewear Line, Ada Active, skincare brands Simply Jess, and beauty company FW Beauty. Brands have user-generated content for promotional purposes for decades, but several ad agencies told Insider they've seen a significant uptick among clients, especially those in beauty, fashion, and food and beverage spaces using UGC and their influencer campaigns in the past few months. So I think the phrase influencer campaign is being used here for like influencer marketing. So I think that's maybe referring to how their influencer campaigns is referring to influencer campaigning budgets. And they are just using a larger chunk of that budget now for their marketing for the UGC content versus like a content creator who's an established influencer or whatever. My point is, is that I think they're using the word influencer incorrectly here, but that's just me. And I'm sure someone's gonna be like, you're just jealous they're making more money than you. No, cause you're not. $7,000 over three months, she's not. It's not about the money. I am talking about the fact I can survive without brand deals. I can survive without a brand reaching out to me for the next 10 months. Even longer. I don't think you can. User-generated content creation is a real job. I'm not trying to imply that it's not. However, I don't think it's the get-rich-quick scheme and that everyone can do it the way that so many of these creators who are trying to frame themselves as UGC gurus are making it out to be. These are the people who are talking about it using MLM language. Advertisers looking to save money in the uncertain economy UGC allows them to create cheap social media content with a less produced quality, giving the videos an authentic feel. And it's a way for social media creators without large followings to cash in. While not all creators will be as successful as daily and consumers may realize the videos aren't that authentic after all, some industry insiders believe UGC will change brand engagement long-term. According to TikTok strategist Denver McQuaid, UGC is the future of ad content. UGC is here to stay, he said, the days of Instagram Instagram perfection and extreme face tune are mostly behind us. See, I think those are two separate things though. We can talk about extreme Instagram perfection and face tune and all of that, but I don't think that's the same thing as an influencer marketing campaign with an individual as the focus, okay? for the campaign itself. I think those are two different things. Unlike sponsored content that gets posted on a creator's personal page, this newly popular UGC belongs to brands and the creators don't need to have a following to establish credibility. In fact, some brands prefer creators with small followings because their content costs less and feels more authentic. It's my understanding that if I were to take a contract for a UGC deal and make the video, that's their ad. I no longer own that because I agreed to make that under their agreement with them. If I make a brand deal, I'm promoting the product, but it's still mine. Unless they pay for the rights to use it other ways, then that's a licensing deal, that's a separate thing. Then I let them use it, never in perpetuity. I don't think you should ever do anything in perpetuity as a content creator, but that's just me for a set amount of time and I charge for that. It's things like this that really make me think there is going to be a crackdown from the FTC across the board on social media marketing. I've talked about this with people in my day-to-day -day life, actually. I'm, I'm working on revamping my personal finances right now. I'm now working with a new accounting company. I am making sure that everything is done step-by-step -step properly. Fairly certain there's going to be a mass influencer audit in the next couple of years, <laughs> if even then. Because of all of these brand deals, the FTX US situation, everything happening with crypto, all of that, but also crackdowns on what is allowed for paid promotion. And that's going to affect influencers who do influencer marketing, hashtag ad, don't forget that, but also people who do UGC content, who make a, con a what is essentially an advertisement without putting hashtag ad or hashtag UGC or whatever it is that is going to be required for brands like these. And so again, I just think where's, mm, 
I know I'm talking in like a grand scale of things, but I really think you're opening yourself up to a lot of legal issues. And there's going to be one lawsuit that we are going to talk about in a second because you got to know exactly what you can and can't do when it comes to user generated content and content in general. This is how the article ends, by the way. So for now, the use of paid UGC is benefiting both brands and influencers. Again, I think we're throwing the word influencer around, but that's just me. But some insiders worry that the tactic may soon come to be seen merely as sponsored content. If a random person creates content with their brand because they love it, what better endorsement can you get? Craig McDowell, media director, and Rachel Pekka, media supervisor at agency TDA Boulder, emailed Insider. If you are paying them for the content, then it feels more like any other ad. And there are times where I see content where I'm like, this seems inauthentic. Okay. And I check the comment sections and sure enough, it's inundated with people. It's like you left out the hashtag ad. Why aren't you admitting that they're paying you? Did you even pay for this product? I don't think you actually use this product. Inevitably people are going to catch on when something is inauthentic. Either last year in 2021, I made a video called who owns what on TikTok, And then last year I made a video talking about don't steal from creators. In that video, I talked about a couple of different things, but we talked about, you know, using music and, uh, promoted ads on TikTok, which do classify as ads and whether or not those people using those audios, whether it's from uh, a popular TikTok sound or a song, if that's legal for them to do, or if that is copyright infringement, or if there was a licensing deal, we talked about a bunch of things. More recently, Mike Smike <laughs> here on YouTube posted on TikTok. Would you rather never slay? Hey, at Parade, just wondering why you're using my voice in this ad on TikTok. I did not consent to this. You did not contact my team and I would know because I am the team. <laughs> we talk about Parade a lot. The, don't worry, the video is coming. And he talked about how no one from Parade had reached out to him or his team because he was his team for permission to use his sound and that they had not paid him. Just because that sound went popular on TikTok does not mean that it can be used as an ad because that is from his video. Me allowing something from a video to go viral on TikTok or whatever, the sound to be played through or whatever is one thing. A brand starts using it for money, Run me my check, okay? We're not doing this. It's that simple. People having fun with it and making like 50 cents off of the creator fund is one thing. A brand that definitely I know has marketing dollars, you're gonna pay me. This is our buddy, Robert Friendlaw. Um, we talked about him in the Don't Steal From Creators video as well. He covers a lot of social media and influencer marketing lawsuits and updates and things going on. So this is from his blog, WMG sues makeup brand Iconic London over music and influencer posts. Warner Music Group's lawsuit against Iconic alleges that Iconic and its influencers use WMG's copyright music without permission. In total, WMG says with more than 165 different copyrighted tracks owned by WMG across at least 169 videos. WMG says Iconic never sought to obtain licenses for the tracks. Remember, brands and influencers cannot use music from TikTok's standard, i.e. non-commercial music library for any sponsored post or advertising without obtaining a license for whoever owns the rights to the music. Platforms like TikTok and Instagram have licensing deals with big record labels that allow users to include music and videos, but those licenses don't allow for commercial usage. Same goes with me. If you are a brand, even if we've worked together, you better talk to me before you use any audio or clips from my videos, etc. Bang Energy was found liable for this exact same type of infringement in a case brought by Universal Music Group earlier this year. The lesson, if you're a brand or a creator, do not use music in sponsored content advertising without clearing the rights damages. Again, if you don't know the business side of things, you're gonna get screwed by the game. It doesn't matter which, how you approach these companies as a content creator, influencer, UGC creator, whatever, okay? They don't respect you. <laughs> you can be friends with individuals at these companies, but the companies as a whole is always going to protect their bottom line over protecting you. you have to be your own advocate, otherwise you're screwed. In doing that, I found something from uh, Robert also talking about how the FTC is announcing they're cracking down on the violations of their rules, including ad disclosures and influencer disclosures. Remember what I talked about? Uh, what would you rather do with $50,120? That's the potential penalty per violation, which means liability can balloon quickly. This is part of why we're seeing more record-breaking settlements and judgments from this aggressive FTC administration. This is not going to go away. This is only going to get worse. You need to protect yourself if you are going to do this. Again, 
the cult of UGC content. I'm talking about this for a variety of reasons. It's not, look how much money I can make. There's risks with everything. There's risks with me making this video. And that includes any UGC content creators reaching out to me and being like, you're a bitch or calling me, can I? I say bitch doll on YouTube? Probably. I do think that user generated content is not gonna go away. But my point is, is that it is not the get rich quick scheme that I'm starting to see it pitched on TikTok, okay? The moment courses get brought up, the moment I'm like, you lost me, because I know that immediately you're gonna start making more money from the courses than you are going to be making from the UGC content. Hermes is growling, what is the problem? WMG wins, then iconic London can turn around and sue the influencer for the 24 million if they in fact did not have the proper protections for their contract in place. That's the risk that you take. And especially if you post it on your page and it still, they can be like, oh look, they post it on their page, which shows that it they actually belonged to them. We just reposted what they posted. We didn't know we were in trouble for that. I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch of shenanigans because that's what people do. They commit shenanigans. And you will not be protected if you rely on them to protect you. My point is, is that again, we're already oversaturated, I think, in the UGC market, whether it becomes more popular or not, you're gonna start seeing the rates going down because there's so many options and everyone's gonna start being priced competitively because if they do X amount of brand deals or X amount of deals, again, that's 7,000, that could be, 50 of them or 100, who knows how many UGC deals are actually in that for that 7,000 that that one creator was making. You are dependent on these brands seeing value in the content that you are making and what you are doing. The moment that these lawsuits start becoming more prevalent or the FTC changes their guidelines or whatever, that value that they see in that content is going to go down, especially if there's not a good ROI for the content that they are paying you for. If people are saying like, this is an ad, this sucks, this is bad. Oh my God, I'm never gonna shop from them again because they did UGC content. That is something that can happen at any given time. You need to be prepared for when that drought inevitably comes to your land. My metaphor is bad, but that's besides the point. I always think that building a stronger base and a stronger community is more valuable than just look how much money I'm making from brand deals. Anyways, that's really gonna be it. Do you think this is a cult? Probably not. I know I'm, I got a little thin on there, but it's just every other video is how to get more clicks on your UGC content, how to get more contacts for your UGC content, how to, all this stuff, it's just inundating my For You page. Do you make user-generated content? Do you think I'm a bitch for everything I said about user-generated content? Do you think that I am jealous because of user-generated content creators? I don't know, tell me what you think. Really, rip into me, tell me, help me in the algorithm. Have fun. What's something that's not a cult, but you kind of think is a cult? Do you think that this was excessive? <laughs> Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have the podcast, the Swell Shannon's podcast. It is officially back. Reminder, I have merch like this mug and shirt designs that will be out for this video as well, coming soon to fourth wall. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my own Patreon. If you'd also support my Patreon, that'll be listed down below. If like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day, goodbye. It's kind of like when everyone talks about YouTube automation, like, oh, you can become popular on YouTube without showing your face and all this stuff. And then suddenly YouTube stops monetizing channels that do that and you realize, oh, I wasted all this time and all this money and all this stuff to not make money from YouTube. I think that that's the inevitable follow through with the amount of people getting into UGC content. Thank you, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Chris P, Crash BC, China, Dirty One, Don, Donnie, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eol, Helpless Incognito, Isaiah, Jack Array, James, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Cami, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lexis, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, Me, Lord, Michael, Michael, J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Rudd, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Sierra, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Heavenly, Plastic, Tom, Querty, Randy, Winter, Wendy, William, Zendry's Week.